Well, it gets more and more humiliating for Labor over its immigration detainee bill. We saw the clown show in Canberra last week where Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill scurried away from journalists when she realised her emergency laws wouldn't get through Parliament. I'm so sorry, I've got to go to a meeting. This is major What's your response? Well, this saga just gets worse. Now the PM is facing an internal revolt. Three Labor senators have joined with the Liberals and Greens to unveil an extensive list of concerns with the PM's emergency migration laws, warning Immigration Minister Andrew Giles would be handed powers that are too wide-ranging and without appropriate parliamentary oversight. A Senate inquiry will now begin looking at the controversial laws that could put asylum seekers in jail for refusing to be deported and blacklist countries that refuse to allow them back. But with another High Court decision looming that could see another 100 detainees freed, do we need these laws now? Our next question for the jury, should the Parliament support Labor's proposed deportation bill? Joining us is David Shoebridge, Federal Greens Senator, and James McPherson, late debate host. Hello to you both. Hey, Good Donna, to see you. Thanks for joining us. David, what are your concerns with this legislation? Well, this legislation was one of the most amateur efforts I've seen from a government. I, I, you know, I said at the time, I thought it was like drawing in crayons from kids. They, they brought in <laughs> legislation. They gave us and others like a 20-minute briefing in the morning, desperately wanting a media statement that it was urgent and had to be rushed through. And then we said to them, well, why is it urgent? They literally didn't have an answer. We said, who does it apply to? They didn't have an answer. We said, does it apply to the group that came out that were the subject of last year's High Court case. Well, it might, it could, kind of. We said, well, where's the urgency? And, and when they had no answer at all, that's when we had finally got the numbers to have a, a very quick inquiry that night and we had the S Secretary of Home Affairs, we had a Labor Assistant Minister there and, again, they'd had, like, 12 hours to prepare for this and we said, well, what's the urgency? Why are you trying to ram this legislation through? Again, no answers. They couldn't even tell us who it would apply to. But we did discover that it was potentially giving the minister the power to issue directions to pretty much any non-citizen, anyone, anyone on a visa, and then it was also giving the power to blacklist any country on the planet. So literally they're proposing to give the immigration minister the power to blacklist any country right. and refuse to process any visas from that country. Mm without any constraints, mm. without telling us who's on the list, mm. although mentioning Russia, Iran, Iraq and South Sudan, yeah. and no constraints and no okay. parliamentary oversight. So yeah. when you're talking amateur hour, mm. this was the worst example of amateur hour from a government that was looking like it wants a media hit yeah. and then desperately trying to work out what the story was behind well, it. Well, it was certainly rushed, 36 hours with, rushed. with, with no, with no explanation. On but on the other end, James, you think, you think that we do need this? Absolutely. And let's get to the heart of what this legislation <clears throat> says. The government is saying that non-citizens <clears throat> who've exhausted every avenue of trying to remain in the country only to come up short <clears throat> should then cooperate with being deported back to their own country. And if they won't cooperate, then they go to jail. This is entirely sensible legislation. If you don't have a right to be here, and we are a very generous country when it comes to our humanitarian, our refugee, etc, etc. If you don't have a right to be here, then you go home. And if you won't participate in that, you go to jail. To, to allow people to stay here when they have no right to be here is to violate the rights of Australians. Right now, we have Australian citizens sleeping in tents, living in their cars because they can't find a home. Not only that, to allow illegal a, a residents to, to stay here when they don't have a right is to undermine the legitimacy of our immigration laws, our border laws. It will only encourage more people to come here if you think, you know what, you can come to this country, you've got no right to be here, but the, nor will they send you back and they'll let you just continue to live here at taxpayer expense. Well, why wouldn't you risk it and come here just like a boat did over the course of the weekend, the third boat since November? That, that, that is a good point. Do you think then, David, we risk saying we are open, we're back, we're back in business, we're going to see more arrivals? What do you think? Well, well, hardly. I mean, the fact that there's one bloke wandering about the Kimberleys is no reason to well, give... Well, there were 15 the Chinese load. who arrived the, the, and 40 who arrived the other day and another boat It's hardly that. a reason, James, to give these kind of godlike powers to an immigration minister. And, and let's be clear what, what they're proposing. They're proposing, say, for example, a woman from Iran who's here with her kids may have, um, may have felt a, a very real sense of being persecuted, fearing being persecuted by a brutal government, um, but has not had her case accepted 
by a very, very racist, one-sided immigration assessment system. James may not agree, but it is. I Most people don't say agree that. that our incredibly, is incredibly biased, racist. incredibly unfair rules. She's had her asylum claim um, refused. She's now told by the Labor immigration minister. If you don't apply for a visa for you and your kids and go back to Iran and face jail and persecution, we're going to put you in jail for a year. That's, that's that, not that, at that all That is exactly happening. what the law says. The, the and, James, let me finish, sure. because you also said people who have exhausted their avenues. Mm. There is no requirement for anyone to have exhausted any avenue. Mm. It's just anyone on a bridging visa. And we're talking tens and tens of thousands of people on bridging visas. Mm. There's an, another power to expand it to anybody. And to give the immigration minister mm. the power to issue you with a direction. And yeah. if you don't do everything he says, cool. you go to jail, mandatory minimum jail for one year. But, David, what Actual you said people, earlier... Actual godlike that, powers to people. ..that the Australian so government would send someone back to Iran knowing that they will face persecution... They said Iran's on the list. Iran is... And Russia, that nice man, Mr Putin. We're going to send p political dis dissidents back to Russia the, and if they don't go put them in jail... The point is the Australian government will not send someone back to a country where they know that person is going to be persecuted. We give those kind of people asylum. We're very generous in that. But where those, those avenues have been exhausted, where there's been found to be no evidence that this person is in danger, they get told to yeah. go back to their country. That's entirely reasonable. If someone lobbed at my house with no right to be there, I'd say, out, and you would agree. This is just that on a national All level. All right, let's get some juror feedback now. Rob, where do you sit on this legislation? I agree with both of you, yeah. fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James, I agree 100% with what you're saying, but with David, I do agree that the rushing of this legislation, we have the upper house specifically for this and I feel very uncomfortable if the second chamber isn't used for what it's there for. So yeah, I agree 100% with the, with the notion but it needs to have the proper checks and balances. That's my issue with the rushing of it. Bruce, it was 36 hours. Quick, let's try and get this done. Um, I agree with James. I think yeah. in this area of immigration we've got to take the sugar off the table and, and take away any incentives and send much firmer signals. Mm -hmm. But I'm a bit worried that I'm not feeling well because I partly agree with David too. Yeah. Uh, insofar as anything where Greens and Liberals agree so strongly must be worthy of further examination. Yeah, so I, I agree it's with rare. A, a little bit of both. It's, it's uncomfortable it, for it, all of us. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. it's a rare moment well, for the Greens. But, but this, is, this is about doing the job of Parliament, right? Mm. It's about not exactly. accepting just anything the government tells you yeah. and just rushing it through. It was yeah. literally warm from the photocopier. But yeah. the blacklisting of countries as well is the other thing. We have people from the Iranian community here who have been working so closely with us in Parliament, trying to put pressure on that regime, and now they're being told they are going to be punished for the crimes of that evil regime. They can't see their families. <clears throat> they can't have any tourism. Is that what we do? We punish right. diaspora communities here because of the crimes of their government? Yeah, and right. that's what's been proposed in this bill. All right, well, look, you've both had your say. Let's call on the jury now. Jurors, you have 10 seconds to decide should the Parliament support Labor's proposed deportation bill? I'm going to change my mind. OK, jury members, time is up. What have you decided? OK, we've got all no's except for two yeses in the front. Oh, no, wait, George, you've changed your... You've changed it. So three <laughs> three yeses in total and the rest of you say no then. Uh, Belinda, yeah. up the back. Yeah, I, I agree with both as well. Like, we, we definitely need it, but it's been rushed and we need the detail. The devil's in the detail with these mm. things. If yes. we don't get it right, then someone's going to lose out. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Robin? Well, for people who are already here and their relatives are in a banned country uh, and they could be good citizens, to, to not allow them in or consider their case is uh, wrong, in my opinion. Fair call. Mm. Well, it's going to be put under some scrutiny then by the Greens yeah. and the Liberal Party, is that right? Yeah, we've, we've got well, hopefully two days of hearing. You know, the government only wants one day of hearing. We want two days of hearing on this to properly investigate it. So we'll do what we can. OK. All yeah. right. David Shoebridge, James McPherson, thank you so Thanks much for joining us on the panel.